Support the work of Strike Seven Sports by heading to Fanatics.com and purchasing officially licensed gear from the NFL, the NBA, and more. Each purchase made through the text link below goes into the funding of the Strike Seven Sports brand. To proceed, go to the link strike7sports.com forward slash fanatics. I say again, strike7sports.com forward slash fanatics. Thank you. Yo, what's up? This your boy, Derek Branch here at Strike7Sports.com. This is another episode of Strike 7 Sports Podcast. I'm joined by my co-host, Brian Bada, Leo the Seabury. This is another episode of the Strike 7 Sports Podcast. So, with that being said, we're going to open it up. Um, As always, it's been another crazy week in the world of sports. Um. NFL schedule. The draft is you know it's over with. Um, the uh, s- schedule came out. Going kind of craziness, but uh, college football. It's May, but college football. It's been um some topics that have been coming up in college football lately, and that's been with the uh, NIL. It all started. Last um last uh Friday with uh Nick State Boys actually started on Thursday with the remarks made by Alabama head coach Nick Saban in regard in regards to his um the NIL situation with the uh the program and um I got the quote of what he said at um, the uh, meeting, the um, sit down he had with a, a few of the, the boosters of the boosters of the program. Saban said, I "quote I know the consequence is going to be difficult for the people who are sending tons of money to get players." Saban said while speaking at an event in Birmingham, Alabama, to promote the World Games being held there in July. You read about it, and you know who they are. We were second. We were second in recruiting last year. A and M was first. A and M bought every player on their team. Made a deal for na- for name, image, and likeness. We didn't buy one player, but I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain that in the future, because more more and more people are doing it. It's tough. All right. So, Jimbo Fisher respond to those remarks made by Saban with some uh, comments of his own. See if I can pull that up real quick. Move on. Give me a second. So you need to move your business online. Go to Fiverr. All right, here we go. Reputable head coach can come out and say this. When he doesn't get his way, things don't go his way. The narcissist in him doesn't allow those things to happen. And it's ridiculous. But when when he's not, when he's not on top and the parody in college football, he's been talking about. Go talk to coaches who coach for him. You'll find out all the parody. Go dig into wherever he's been. You can find out anything. <laughs> We're here in defense. Because we do things right. We're always going to do things right. But we're, not, we're always going to always going to be here. We're doing a heck of a job. These coaches have done a great job. Our players have done a great job. The whole organization of recruiting people. It's despicable that we got to set at this level of ball and, and say these things to defend the people of this organization, the kids, 17 year old kids and their and their families. It's amazing. Some people think they're God. Go dig into why God did his his deal. You may find out about about a guy that a lot of things you don't want to know. We build him up to be the czar of football. Go dig into his past or anybody that's ever coached with him. You can find out anything you want to find out about what he does and how he does it. And it's despicable. It really is. And it's a shame we have to sit up here and have this conversation about things we do. And it's personal to us? Yes, it is. It's personal to A&M. It's personal to our players. It's personal to our coaches and everybody involved. 
And I know the guy. I know him really well. It's amazing that we're allowed to do those things. It's really despicable. And I, and I hate it. For our players who are coming here, who did things the right way, have done things the right way, and will continue to do things the right way, I apologize to you that people insult you publicly the way they're doing it. And our fans, I, I, I apologize to you guys for people saying those things about Texas, about Texas a and I promise you this, there are, no, there are no violations. There are nothing wrong. It's the second time we've had to do this with grown men who don't get their way and want to pout, throw a fit, and act up. Just go ask all the people who work for him. You'll know exactly what he's about. I always said this. My dad always told me this. When people show you who they are, believe them. He's showing you who he is. Questions? All right. I'm going to cut it from there. All right. So those are the words of Nick Saban and one of his protégés, uh, Jimbo Fisher. So I just want to ask y'all, man. I came to this conclusion with it, this question. I wanted to, been wanted to ask y'all this since last week. What do you think is the true reason why Nick Saban made those remarks on NIL? Uh, I can't remember who said I'll take this one first. I can't remember who said this, but someone uh, made the point that it's kind of even the, lay, uh, the playing field. And so that's why I think that Nick Saban maybe is getting – nervous that he may not be the king of college football anymore so that's why this was out of frustration and also someone also thought that maybe he this was a way of challenging his boosters to that they in order to be where alabama wants to be they're gonna have to um, invest more money into the program um but nick saban was out of line here i agree with a lot of what jimbo fisher said uh but the one thing i will agree with nick saban is I can't speak for all the AM, all the AM's classes, but uh, this particular one, I think NIL, NIL, however they say it, played a um, big role in it. Now they said only one player had a deal, had a deal, but I still think the ability to pay players really helped AM. That's just my personal opinion. So I don't, I don't think Nick Saban, Nick Saban is all the way out of line. Now what he said about Deion Sanders, I don't know if you mentioned that. Uh, that's the one that really, really got me kind of fired up. I, I don't think that was fair to say that about Deion Sanders. And it's not just Nick Say. A lot of people are just uninformed. Uh, Travis Hunter didn't get that. He got a, a decent, a decent NIL, but he didn't get like the one that everyone thinks he got, which is like millions of dollars. It just wasn't cheap. So I just wish more people would be informed on that situation. Yeah, I didn't say Leo. Leo. I feel that Nick Saban, like Brian said, kind of frustrated with everything, you know. He has been, like Jimbo was saying, like, if he's, you're seeing the parity in college football now. You're seeing that Alabama not going to be able to walk into SEC and just win every year, you know what I'm saying? It's not it's not Bama and everybody else chasing anymore. It's, you know, it's Georgia, Georgia, everybody. He's just seeing that. And so I think it kind of frustrated him. NIL as a whole is probably he probably you can tell he's not a fan of it, and I mean, even though his quarterback is a millionaire, but that's not here no there. But the point is, I feel like he's frustrated with it. I feel like go up to him, up to him, there would be no NIL, and I feel that he, like Brian was saying, I feel like it also could be a challenge. It's like a come on, y'all got the, Alabama, we got all this money, got all these boosters, we need to get these best players because. A and M getting these top notch players, and so, and three or four years ago, A and M would have, and would have had no chance to get some of these players that they're getting. But like, and like you said, NIL it has been a game changer, and it's benefited a lot of programs. And Alabama's going to get players, so I really don't see what he was bad about. Cause you saw you had the number two recruiting class with no with no NIL players, so Bama's going to get talent regardless. So, I, so I don't see what he was quote-unquote, upset about. But I understand where he's coming from, though, because a &M has benefited from getting these players. And, and really got to give credit to Jimbo Fisher, too, because he's changed the outlook of the program since he's been there. So give, give him credit. And and I really don't like – I didn't like – I just did what Saban said, but he could have said it in a better, it in a better way. Okay. You done? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with everything Leo said. All right, here's my thing, man. From both sides, from Jimbo Fisher's side and Saban's side of the story. 
the, 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 the situation. For Nick Saban, I don't understand why is he really threat feels threatened by NIL and the other programs getting all, all these um, talented players because I compare the NIL to like the NFL salary cap. You can have the cap the cap space to go sign these sign all the um, great players for free agents. But unless you have the, the right head coach and the quarterback, that doesn't mean you're going to be any good. So A&M has a um, – the number one recruiting class because of the NIL, NIL, but that doesn't mean it's going to translate onto the field. And Nick Saban is a coach that has seven national championships and has been winning before the NIL when they were doing things under the table. So I know for a fact he they, they took care of a, a lot of those players that he has or that he's that has came through that program. So I don't see why Saban needs to be so you know threatened by nil in the program and um these what these other programs are doing also i mean it's kind of like I, I don't know if y'all feel like this feel like this though but if do y'all think that's like a like a small market big market type of thing going on with the uh nil where i'm hearing like because texas the reason why texas is and florida is gonna get so many uh recruits elite recruits with the NIL is because the resources that sources they have, the boost type of boosters they have, the oil money, the um, natural resources, the energy uh industry are in those states, you know, um, are prominent prominent in those states. Do y'all think that's a um a issue as far as how to compete with Alabama? Uh I'll take this one first. I I don't know. I feel like while players want to compete at the high level, the number one thing for most at least big-time college football players is they want to get to the league. So they'll still go to the schools that help them get that, get that. So, but I think and I like, yeah, in some, like USC, if you want to, for example, being in L.A., you have a lot of uh, opportunities there. So I, I see what you're saying to agree to a degree, but at the end of the day, players want to go where, to the places that can help them get to the league. So as long as you can help them get to the league, um, then they'll get there. All right. Yeah, but um, I just think he has nothing to really worry about yet in regards to him, the competition. Um, it doesn't matter um, what happens because it is. It's not like the only like really threat to Nick Saban is like outside of the conference. Yep. Dabo Sweeney. Unless Dabo Sweeney comes to the SEC, I think Saban is good, and we don't really know what Brian Kelly could, is going to do at LSU because when we're based on what I've heard and read, is that LSU is behind the power curve with the NIL, so we shouldn't be too concerned about Brian Kelly at the moment. You know, so I don't understand why he, he, he the, the feels the need to be. I, I would be out, be so out fraud about fraud about speaking on nil. Now, the, uh, Jimbo, yeah, Jimbo Fisher. I mean, why I don't understand why is he deflecting during that press conference? Just go ahead and admit it and say, yeah, we got the number one recruiting rec rec recruiting class because of nil, and I'm proud and I'm proud of it. You shouldn't deflect. Be proud of it. Be proud that you were able to use your resources to uh, get the best players in the country. But now, but like I said, it has to translate onto the field. Just I mean, last year they lost to uh, LSU, last game of the year. Game of the year. You know they lost to Arkansas on a neutral setting. Well, in a, in a setting where they had the home field advantage in uh jury world. You know, but they beat Alabama. That's crazy to me. But that is that, that's because A and M has those that talent. Doesn't mean they're gonna translate to translate to winning championships, to national championships. If anything, it's, it's, it maybe it's gonna be Texas that is gonna be better than them. You know, so we'll see. Any other um, final thoughts? Yeah. 
Que ganar. Yeah, 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 I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm multitasking. Yeah, yeah I'm right. trying to watch this game too as I'm doing this. All right, man. So move right along. Say we're over to uh, the news that came out today um, from uh, Adam Schefter, as told by Paul Guterres. The uh, Raiders will have a uh, tryout for um, Colin Kaepernick in an effort to him, him, for him to join the team. So, according to this, um, by Paul Guterres of ESPN, just spoke with Raiders owner. Hold on. I've told coaches and general managers that if they want to hire capital, they, they have my blessing. Just spoke with Raiders owner Mark Davis, who said team, employ- team employees have a company paid day off on Juneteenth. Also asked about Kaepernick, Davis said since 2017, I've told, yeah, I'm saying it again, I've told coaches and general managers that if they want to hire Kaepernick, they have my blessing. End quote. So just want to ask you your thoughts on this. Um, um, do you think Kaepernick will make it to training camp after this uh, workout? Um, I think that I don't know. I'll say I'll say yes, but I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. That's the way I look at it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, because you wouldn't be like, yeah, ahead. yeah. Sorry. Because he hasn't played in so long. So, I mean, I'll be honest. To be honest, if he makes the roster, that would be shocking. That's the way I'm going to look at it. And then one thing I was going to add, a lot, of, a lot of people on Twitter think this has something to do with the John Gruden lawsuit. And at first I was like, no, they're just saying that. But now that I think about it, I think it, 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 I don't think this is just a coincidence. Do you think it's a coincidence? Or do you think this has – they're kind of um, – like they're both together both together in a way. What do you mean they're both together? Like they would if this John Green and the, 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 the ruling got in the, the judge ruled in his favor. Yeah, but what I'm saying is if if John Greedon didn't have this lawsuit or it had already passed, do you think the Raiders would still be doing this? That's all that's all that's all I was, I was wondering. I, I don't know about that. If you were still with the team? No, no, what I'm saying, I mean, I, I don't know. What I'm saying is, how do I explain it? Now, what I'm saying is if, if John, if this, if, all right, if you want to say if he's with the team, if he with, if he was with the team, I don't think he, he, he would because he had his opportunities. And I, I remember he gave an interview about it and he was like, what he was basically saying, I'm sure he'll get a shot, but he knew deep down he probably wasn't going to get a shot. But the point I'm trying to make is I think, I don't think the Raiders would be doing that if this thing wasn't going on. Do you agree? You agree with me, or you disagree? I disagree. So I, you just think- think he, I just think he's getting—he's getting, he's finally getting the shot. It's been long overdue. All right. I hope you're right. Well, it'll be interesting yeah. to see. Uh, and also, I want to see if because you know the issue with the last workout, there was a there was a waiver that he. If he didn't sign it, if he signed it, he would have given away his right to sue if it didn't work out. So I want to see if that waiver is in this workout and if he if he signed it or not. And I'm get and the workout I guess was today, so we'll we'll find out later on. But I I, I want to hear from Lear from Leah, the Raiders fan, what he thinks. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot, man. I forget you're, you're teaming in the lose the news a lot lately, man. Yeah, I'm done. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. We can't hear you. Hmm. I don't know what happened. Hmm. 
Gus is going to try to leave and come back. Okay. Yeah, man. But I just think it's long overdue, man. Dude should have been got a shot. Yeah. Everybody else, if everybody else could, could, uh, come off the street and get opportunities to play after being out of football for so, football for so long, so can he. Yeah, He's but. The majority of those guys. Yeah, but I, I'm not saying he shouldn't have gotten a shot, but I don't think he's helped himself. Do you think that's fair to say? Go cool. on. Can I hear you now? I've been telling this guy he needs to get better Wi-Fi. He won't listen. <laughs> I think that's the problem. I could be wrong. Yeah, not here. Hello? Can you hear me, DB? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay. So, basically, um, today was it was a big day. Kyle and Kaepernick got his – he has his shot now. You, This is what he's been waiting for almost five years for this moment. For this moment. Ever since he declined the player option with the 49ers in 2017. There is a need for it with, with the with the remove with, with Marcus Mariota signing with the Atlanta Falcons. There is a need at the backup quarterback position. It's it's all fair game. Colin Kaepernick is in there. He's uh we, we just signed some I forgot we just signed, but we just signed someone else to come in and try to be the backup. But Colin is gonna give us the biggest ceiling at the backup quarterback position. I feel if we get him in there, he's still in shape. It, keep in mind, I think he's I think he's 33, 32. No, he's 33. Yeah, he's still young, yeah. He's still young. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. say young, DB, but and, but he he, he with, with the fact that he hasn't had much contact in the last five years, so he's still a he may he may be 30, 30, 30 years old in terms of football years, years. Because yeah, but with the lack of contact. And so with, I think the move is – I think it's a legit move. I don't think it's a, a for, for show move. Mark Davis came out and said that today. We If if they think he can come in – and he has done nothing wrong. Like, what is the – the, the problem at this point is what is the controversy inside of him? He's, the man has done nothing, done nothing wrong. You have to keep looking at that. Like, he's not you're, – you're not trying to justify him. It's not like the Browns with Deshaun Watson. He, even though he's been proven it's done nothing wrong in terms of, like, from a legal sense, a lot of people are feeling that, you know – from the allegations, but the worst thing Colin Kaepernick did was take a knee, and now yeah. he's finally he's getting a shot. Shot, and you know he knows he he won't be a starter if everything if, if unless something goes wrong. If, if everything it goes right, he'll be a high. He's a high ceiling backup. He immediately becomes if I think it, from day one to be a top ten backup in the league, and it, and they might make packages just for him. You know what I'm saying? You never know. We know with Josh McDaniels, McDaniels with the the brilliant play caller he is, he make his scheme of a way for him to get on the field. Like like he like they like he did with Mariota for we they had design packages for him, you know. So they may have be working him out within a uh, with a role that they have envisioned for him. So I think it's a very smart signing. Uh, um only question is Colin, you know He's gonna want. To, I mean, he knows he won't be a starter, but I feel like maybe once he gets to the point to where you know, okay, he gets his rhythm back, he'll think, okay, I should be playing now. But, but I think he should. He'll have. He'll have a grateful mentality, and that he'll be happy to be on the team. And so, I think it'll be. He'll make if he make if we keep if they decide to you know keep him. I mean, it's a workout, so nothing nothing was guaranteed. So, but I think he gives us a higher ceiling at the backup quarterback position than any of the other options at this moment. All right. Um, you know I gotta ask this, you know I gotta go there with this, man. So what if he what if Carr gets hurt, man? What if he get hurt? And he plays yeah. well. Do you go back to Carr? See, and you know, you just gave gave Carr the big extension. Keep in mind he just signed a huge extension. And you know, that's gonna pack your attention. The, the the owner, you know, management is always gonna side with the with the player they've invested the most in for the most part. Unless you just come in and you know wreck the room like like a like a Tom Brady did with Drew Bledsoe type situation. But I, we highly doubt that. Doubt that. You know that's the worst case scenario. But I mean, 
I think you should still go back to Derek Carr because this guy has been with the – he's built up eight years of work with this team. And I know it's always easy to ride the hot hand. And the people think about that, okay, okay Kyler Kaepernick's winning games. Derek, we weren't winning games like with Derek Carr kind of situation. So, if, so if, it depends. If 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 Carl was playing good and he and then he got hurt, okay, we go back to Carl. But if Carl was kind of struggling, and you know, Kyle Kaepernick gives us that spark, and he let's say he's the difference between us winning, going to the playoffs, and not making the playoffs, then I don't know. You get, it'll be a dangerous decision. That's all I'll say. Uh, what was I gonna say? You go guys may not agree with this. Uh, two questions or uh, two things to say. Nick Mullins is better than Colin Kaepernick right now. Now, Colin Kaepernick can prove me wrong, but I would rather have Nick Mullins as my backup than Colin Kaepernick. Number two, I was talking to DB about this earlier. Do you think the John Gruden lawsuit has any – do you think the timing is – Is do you think it's a coincidence or it just happened to just be at this time and it's not something that people should consider when talking about this? Oh, uh, uh. I honestly don't think I don't think there's a correlation between the two because I think it's just like a, a legitimate coincidence because that lawsuit wasn't really you know I mean it's obviously it's relevant but you know to Kaepernick I don't see how there's the correlations there I mean I just think it's, it's a man like DB DB said when you asked him him um, it's about time that he got a shot it's plain and simple you took five five years. You know, this man could – we don't know what Colin Kaepernick could have been, you know, in the last five years in terms of a playing standpoint because his play had started to dwindle, like, it's, 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 it's his ability. But, you know, you take five years from a man, and I don't, I don't think a lawsuit should be correlated to that. Now, maybe I'm looking at it from a, you know, we want Kaepernick to be successful. You want Kaepernick to get back in the league standpoint. But I don't think there's a correlation. But I do think that um the, it is a, it is significant news, Brian, that they didn't uh, turn away. You know, the NFL tried to throw away away a group lawsuit. Um, I was looking at the lawsuit. He has some legitimate gripes. He has some legitimate gripes in there. I'm not now. What he got fired for with those emails? I can't sympathize with him on that, but I can sympathize with if, with his argument when it comes to the NFL standpoint. A little, a little bit. So. You know, I don't think there's a correlation there, but I do think that the fact that they didn't get the, that lawsuit didn't get thrown away and it's going to go forward. I'm I'm really eager to see how that played out. Yeah, they had Brian. Uh, the one thing I'll say, John Gruden, he messed up, up when he did that. So I mean, I kind of feel sorry for him there, but also, I think I, I remember when we were talking about this when it first happened. I believe someone in the NFL wanted was trying to get him out. I think yeah. that's fair to say. So I don't think those emails just were, happened randomly. Someone had been, had been planning this for a while, and they busted him and got him out. But I wouldn't mind, like, a t- if a TV network gave him opportunity to call games, I, I wouldn't think it's crazy. I, I was wondering y'all's thought. Do you think he should be, be able to do that? Or he... I, that's just I think people deserve second their second chances. Man, look, they gonna forget about that stuff in like another three or four months, man. He'll he'll be he'll end up somewhere, man. When the stuff dies down. You think he's gonna get another NFL job? No, he's gonna be a commentator somewhere. All right, okay, about this, somewhere. Yeah. I could see that's that. I don't, he works. ain't gonna be an NFL coach. A coach. Again. Yeah, that's the way of the world, man. They're gonna forget about it, man. In like three, three to four months, man. They're gonna forget about it. He'll start making appearances on shows again. Somebody will give him a job. But you think so? Yeah. Somebody somebody will give him a job, man. I don't know if it's gonna be ESPN, but somebody <laughs> yeah. give him a job. A job. Because <laughs> they got people on these networks doing far worse than what he did. Yeah. Doing a whole lot of worse stuff. Yeah. And they have to go like to a lower level. Like, I don't know who see, I think. XFL that's going to be on ESPN, so I don't think they'll hire him. But I don't, but I don't know. I could see Fox giving him a shot. I could, yeah, I could see. Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer. Look, yeah, come on, that's a, that's a good point. But he, Urban Meyer will coach somewhere. He will coach somewhere. Yeah. So there's always a chance he, he comes back. But in regards to Cal, I think 
outside of the, 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 the Raiders, I think there's like two places, I think, two teams where I think he could be a legit starter and take over. The Falcons and the Seahawks. He could go there and start. I think he could beat Mario out. Uh, it's kind of tough for me because he hasn't played in so long. So maybe. Yeah. He, but when you haven't played so long, it's hard for me to say that. But the thing with the Seahawks, I feel like if they wanted to sign him, they would have signed him a long time ago. So that's that's my big issue. And I, and the thing with Pete Carroll, I know he's saying he loves to say the right things, but if you're, if you're going to do something, dude, if not, then... You might as well not say anything. That's just my opinion on that. But uh, I, well, I forgot to ask uh, real quick. Do you think he'll kneel during the anthem if he gets an opportunity? And obviously, it's not an issue. I, it's it's just an interesting question to ask. I don't know, man. Like, if he does, he does, man. Yeah. But it ain't no, he not going to get no backlash for it because nah. now nah. It's, it's cool to be, you know, be activist. Against you know the stand for these costs compared to yeah. 2016, so but, yeah, it shouldn't even matter. It, yeah, it shouldn't. But it'll be interesting. Let's say he doesn't kneel. I wonder if a lot of the other players will follow his lead because again, like he was the face it of the will. movement. Yeah, and so look at the time. I I just think like what people don't understand. Is I don't think he ever thought ever thought it would be this big, and I don't think he ever wanted to like get the attention. Like I bet he was shocked looking back that he was ever asked that asked that question. And so, obviously, everything has happened and we've moved forward. But I think now I think he would he would handle if he could change and change anything, he would handle it a little better. Maybe we just gotta see how it could play out, man. We just gotta see if, he, if they actually get him on invite to training camp. You know, they probably. I think he probably will. We'll see. Look, if I'm trying to make money, and I know the Raiders are a big brand, I'm definitely keeping him until preseason. Season, that's people will yeah. want to see those games. So that that's definitely a, a decision I would make. Yeah, yeah, and his jersey. I mean, his jersey sales will go through the roof. He actually gets on the team. So we'll see for a backup. All right, but moving right along, man. We're oh, we going to talk about, continue to talk about the NFL and talk about some breakout, potential breakout players for this season. Because every year there's a batch of players that seem to find their, hit their stride, and have a success, successful season and move on to other things. So, Two players I got. I got three of them. Three players that the quarterbacks that I think can have a breakout year in 2022, and that's Trevor Lawrence, Tua, and maybe I'm leaning towards Justin Fields as a breakout uh, candidate for my breakout uh, players. What do y'all got? What do y'all think? Um, I'll take this first. One more thing I wanted to add on the Colin Kaepernick thing. If they sign him and keep him, his first appearance could be at the NFL Hall of Fame game. I just saw that the uh, the Raiders are taking on the Jaguars, so that'd be a big stage for him to show some showcase some of his talent. But yeah, back to what you're saying. You you said Trevor Lawrence, Herbert. Did you say Burrow? You know, I say Trevor Lawrence, Tua, and Justin yeah. Fields. Who do you think okay. will have the biggest year? I'd probably like, go, with Trevor, like, go with Trevor like, Lawrence. That's my breakout players. My breakout players are those yeah. guys. I, if, I'd probably go with Trevor Lawrence. I think uh, last year was just a disaster. He has a – I feel like having a guy like Doug Peterson, who is a former quarterback, he's done a really good job with developing quarterbacks. I, th I think he's um, going to have the best year, in my opinion. T was an interesting guy because I think – I don't think he may have – like big numbers, but I think he could fit what, like he, I think he could be like Miami's version of Jimmy Garoppolo. So that may not be like the splashy thing in terms of numbers, but he can help them win games. And then Justin Fields, this guy, the, the OC they hired came from Green Bay. So he came from the Matt LaFleur system, kind of, and they, and that's, and Matt LaFleur came from the Kyle Shanahan system. So I think 
Uh, I think Fields could have a solid year, but year. But if I had to pick one of those, it'll definitely be uh Trevor Lawrence. Uh, but I do think all three of them can improve and have solid years. Yeah, do you say Leo? Um, well, shifting from a a, a quarterback standpoint, standpoint, you know, you all break out players. Well, your breakout player list was, you know, was it kind of, you know, quarterback contained. Um, I really think that, you know, a team that and you, they have a few breakout players. I have a few breakout players in mind that, you know, for me, though, I think will come back and I think will be even better. Um, and then I break out guy. One of these guys was hurt last year. He didn't play for a year. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of off the dome. So it's kind of you may be a little different from my mindset. Um, I'm going with, you know, a breakout guy. You know, he didn't play last year. Travis Etienne from um, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. He didn't play last year. Um, he was he was there. He was their second first round pick. But that was with Trevor Lawrence, you know. And I think because the comfortability he played, having played with him in college, I think that's going to help both of them. Trevor and it's going to be. Um, big for um, Travis obviously being back, but you know having that having that, that that safety blanket and knowing that okay, I played with this guy. We we played three years together. We won championship. We had a championship together. So I think him getting Etienne back is gonna be really big. Um, I think Zach Wilson. You all you know I'm sticking on the grab on, on the quarterback train. You all didn't mention him. Um, Zach Wilson is gonna has a very very much improved uh, cast of weapons to work with offensively with the Jets. You know, you have Brees Hall. You have um, the guy they signed it to, to CJ Uzoma from the uh, t- from the not Titans from the Bengals. They have um, I don't know. They drafted. They got they they, they signed a few linemen in free agents free agency. Um, Zach Wilson's gonna be a guy that I think will step forward and make um, big strides going forward. And lastly, um, but not, he's kind of a rookie, a rookie guy, you know. Um, Kayvon Antibodeau, he's not a breakout guy. I mean, he's been in the he, he hasn't been he hasn't been in the league. This is gonna be his first year. But I feel like he I feel like he's gonna be such a big um a big um you know part of their team because that defense is really good already. But you know, you add a guy like Thibodeau who is like a who is a, a, a gonna be a he's gonna be their best he might be their best, best different player. Day one, besides Alujari, the guy they drafted last year, who she, who Alujari is gonna be really good too. They have two bookend DNs that are gonna be like I think that's a that's a good duo for the next five ten years in the league. Him and Alujari, uh, Thibodeau. So I and that, yeah, Alujari gonna be a breakout player too. But last but not least, and this is gonna be a controversial pick. I I tried to stay off the quarterback gravy train. You know you know you know what y'all? I'm gonna say Daniel Jones is gonna be. <laughs> That's another guy. You you think about it. You you with Brian Dable, one of the best offensive minds in football. Like Dable is a legit. Like he's respected around the NFL. If if Dable can't save you, nobody can. Because it's more because it's more thing to have Joe Judge as your coach. Okay, you had Joe Judge. But if you can't, Dable, we we know he can win. We know with with as an offensive coordinator, you wanted Bama, won with Buffalo. If, if that eventually they're gonna have to move on off him, I think Jones will still be saved, be saved. I and they obviously believe it too because or they would have drafted another quarterback. So he obviously they will see these tools that maybe we don't see, but it's gonna be interesting to see if Jones has that breakout season. I think he does with a rejuvenated um offensive line. You know, they drafted two, you know, they drafted like two or three, like two or three offensive line. Lyman too, yeah. so like you know that they 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 don't want to give Jones no excuses. And Barkley's coming back too, so he'll have the, the core of of receivers and backs, and so it'll be interesting to see. So, Daniel Jones, man, I just I just think the Giants, think the Giants prepare for twenty twenty three, man. The twenty twenty three class, man, it's just uh, it's gonna be stacked, man. That's what I think. Uh, we got what I mean on paper, like. On paper, the Giants look like, look like a good football team. Yeah, Saquon Barkley, uh, Darius Slayton. I'm sorry. I have to refresh this. On, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kenny Galladay. Um, they lost a tight end every day, but 
It was, on paper, it looks good, man. But I just think the Giants just mailing it in for this year, for, for 2023, man. Dang, Jones, his time is up, man. Could be up in uh, New York, man. So we'll see. But what about uh, Josh Jacobs, man? You think he can get over, get past, does he get a cliff and thousand yards for this season? Oh, you know, he has, you know, he actually played all right last year. He didn't play up to his ability. I think he did with a few injuries. But I think, you know, the fact that he did not, uh, he did not, uh, we declined his fifth year option. So this is his last year guaranteed on contract. So he has a lot of, a lot of motivation because you never know. Zamir Mike, you know, who they, who they drafted out of Georgia. Might be his replacement, you know. They got in the fourth round. That may be called a running back one for two out twenty three. I do think with, with that, is, with that being in mind, to ask your question, I do think he does get a thousand yards. He is a very when Josh Jacobs is on, he's a talking like over a thousand yards though. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, like thirteen hundred, sure. thirteen to fourteen hundred. Because I look at his stats, is it, it, like he just get a thousand. Like he got a thousand plus yards the past two seasons. He get over it like a Jonathan Taylor season. I don't think our offense is going to, you know, we're, we're the Raiders are a team that prompt that lives off the pass, off the pass. You know what I'm saying? So it's not the Colts yeah. are more of a granted pound team than maybe you know uh, Taylor is able to benefit off that. You know, with McDaniel's and McDaniel's, you know, and all of his systems DB, you know, it's multiple quarterback, multiple running backs are, you know, are you know he has a multiple running back system, so he might not get all the touches that to, that to get. 14, 1500 yards, but I think he'll crack 1100, 1200. But you know what? What's big about what's big about, like I said, the system is they emphasize multiple running backs. That's why they drafted. You know, we drafted Britton Brown out of UCLA in the seventh round. So I think it'll be a change of pace back. He makes the team, and I think I think you know Zip uh, White from uh, Georgia. Those are the that I think those three backs, with, including with what we have too. So I think I think they'll be you know. He getting the success of the team. I don't think it'll be uh, Josh Jacobs getting 300, 300, 400, what, 300, 350 touches, you know. So I don't think he gets the 14, 1500 yards. But I, like I said, 1200, 1100 yards, I think that'll that'll be his ceiling for this season, unless he comes out and surprises me. Hey, one quick, so one quick question I have to ask both of y'all Do you think his contract situation will play a role? Like the Raiders, the Raiders, if he has a good year, he may use as leverage to get more money. And I don't even know if they're gonna even pay him that much anyway. But or do they? Do you think they just will do whatever it takes to win? And I actually I'm not so sure. I agree with you on the that the Patriot or that Josh Daniels won't run the ball because maybe because he had Mac Jones. Mac Jones or the Patriots ran the ball a lot. But they did. So I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, now maybe it's because they had a young quarterback, and now they have a veteran quarterback there, so he may try to do some of the stuff he did with Tom Brady. But I, I still think they're going to run the ball, maybe more than people think. I, I never said they weren't going to. I never said. I said, well, I was. Well, let me clarify that. Brady's offense in the past seasons has been predicated off and mostly off the pass, and I and I was saying that Josh McDaniels, he all his systems include most running backs. You know, in New England, they never had one set running back with him. Like, they was never, uh, oh, he had a bell cow, you get 350 touches. I would say that bell cow, that, that closest thing to a bell cow last year was Damian Harris. And, you know, and but there was always James White, um, Burke, they, other, other run backs. They got more, uh, a, a stable back. So, you know, that's how that's kind of how I think McDaniels Mc, think wants to build the Raiders. I don't think he wants them to be John Jacobs Orion. I believe he's the number one back. He's the most talented back in the team. But I think that he's he's open. You know, he wants backs to be. You know, like Jalen Richard will be a big back for us. Like he'll we we have four different backs. You know, that's a stable of backs that you know can do multiple things. Multiple things. And John, ja- we won't see. I don't think we'll see John Jacobs catch the ball at the back for much this year. I think you have Richard. You have multiple other backs that can do that. So you know. That's why I was saying he, he diversifies his all of his backs so over purpose. I don't think it'll be just we'll see John Jacobs on first down, second down, third down, yada yada. So you know, yeah, I think he'll be a two he'll be a two down back, and that's that. A two down back, okay. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I mean with, with the we, with the weapons that that we were that that the 
not we, I'm not on the team, but you know that I was a fan. But the, 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 with the weapons that the Raiders possess, that we have third down, change of pace backs. Rashard's one of the, when Jalen Rashard's healthy, he's one of the best pay, change of pace backs in the league, in my opinion. I think he's going to see a lot of work in that offense. Uh, the Josh McDaniel led offense, there's going to be a lot of work, a lot of opportunities for um, Jalen Rashard. Um, I just think, man, in order for him to get like paid, paid I think he, he's gonna have to get a, at least, I would say, 1300 yards at the minimum, at the most, to like even get a new deal from the Raiders. Because I just think the Raiders are gonna move, gonna walk away, move on from him, to be honest. Yeah, because you know, he, he hasn't done anything, done anything that I'm not gonna cut you off or anything, but he hasn't. He's been a he's been a part of a playoff team, you know. He's and he's had he's put up solid numbers, but he's not a Jonathan Taylor. He's not a Jonathan, and Jonathan Taylor is a different breed. You know, the Colts are going to pay him, obviously, but he he's, he's just not. Josh Jacobs is a really good, really good running back, but he's not he's not good enough to where people don't think he's irreplaceable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's gonna have to, he's gonna have to. It's a contract year. This is his proving year. Because you don't want to go, you don't want to go out to the free and to the market now. You not and you end up not having a market and having to take a one year deal somewhere. So he's gonna be motivated to play well. I have to play well. I think he has a really good season, but you just you know, I don't think the Raiders are really gonna you know. Oh, he's he's having a he's gonna uh, he's he's in a contract year. This is the NFL. They're trying to win. Nobody. It don't matter if he's in a contract year. It don't matter if he has two years, three years, five years. They're trying to win. So as long as John Jacobs is adding to that in a positive in a positive manner, he'll be on the field. Yeah. And one quick thing, y'all know this: Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler. They never drafted him, so he's not one of their guys. So, and also, you win. I feel like they'd rather have running backs by committee. So that right there tells me, even if he does have a great year, great year. I don't think they'll overpay for him. And if and I just I, I see think it's more likely that this is his last season with the Raiders. That's just my personal opinion. And another last thing right here. Um another thing that can happen. I'm not saying that it will, but this is pure speculation by me. By me. I think they could trade him if they want to to the Saints. If the Saints inquired about him. It might and give up give up fair compensation. It may make him play on that because the Saints need a running back to go along with Alvin Kamara because we don't know what's going to happen with his uh, court issue with the uh, that fight that took place in Vegas. So he could be there's a chance he could be suspended. So it's a need for that. So we don't we don't we don't really know, but that could that could possibly happen. So we'll see. All right, that's all we have for y'all for right now. Give us a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let us know how you feel, how you feel about the topics we talk about. You listen to this through Apple, Spotify, give us a five star rating, and leave your comments. Also, in the description below, check out strikesellsports.com for latest content on NFL, the NBA, and much more. Have a blessed night. Peace. We out. We'll be back.